And I, I looked up on the wall of the church, if you can imagine, it said, right there in the church, like graffiti on the wall, Blessed are the poor in spirit. And I thought, what the heck is that about? And I look over and it says, Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek, the gentle, the nonviolent. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for working for justice. And on the altar it says in big letters, Love your enemies. The chapel of the Beatitudes, commemorating the Sermon on the Mount. You know, Jesus' main political teachings, if you will. And not being very bright, I kind of like one of them, I always tell everybody. And I suddenly, I almost said it out loud in the church. Oh my God, I think he's serious. <laughs> And I walk out on the balcony and I'm looking out over the whole Sea of Galilee. And when you're on Holy Pilgrimage, you get wackier than usual. And I'm talking to God and this big blue sky and big blue sea and these green hills. And I'm saying, God, is this what it means to be a Christian? I thought the point was just to be nice, to be a pious Jesuit, which you probably think is an oxymoron. <laughs> I have to hunger and thirst for justice? I have to be a peacemaker? I have to love my enemies? I have to love the people declared expendable by our government? And I have to do this, not some pope or bishop or somebody else? You and I have to do this? This is what, if you claim to be a Christian, if you're going to follow this guy, you have to practice these teachings? I thought and I thought and I thought. I looked up at the sky and I said, Okay, God, I promise to work on the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes and work for peace and justice for the rest of my life on one condition. <laughs> if you give me a sign, I put my fist down on the balcony. I was quite content with myself because I know we don't get signs anymore. And I can say, hey, I tried, but you don't get proof. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sure sign. I was probably getting the message of the saints. That was looking for a loophole. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there were these loud explosions. And three big jets fell from the sky at that morning, moment, breaking the sound barrier, setting off these sonic booms, which happens all the time in the Middle East, and they swooped right down on the Sea of Galilee, and they're coming right at me, and I ducked, and I looked up and I said, okay, I'll work for peace and justice. <laughs> <laughs> and they dropped a bunch of bombs and killed a whole bunch of people 15 miles away at the border of Lebanon. And what happened as I reflected and tell that story in some detail is, I opened my eyes just in case. But what did I see? But the reality of the world. Which is mass murder. Sisters and brothers all over the planet tonight killing sisters and brothers, actually in the name of God, even at the place where Jesus said, love your enemies. It was an incredible experience. And this is, it's worse today. So I entered the Jesuits and joined every peace and justice group I could and met. Some of us are heroes, the Berrigan Brothers, and involved in the Pax Christi and Fellowship of Reconciliation, and organizing demonstrations against war, nuclear weapons. That led me to start crossing the line and getting arrested. Now I've been arrested like 75 times and I have a problem with recidivism, but that's another issue. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 1985, went to live and work with the Jesuits in El Salvador. Uh, and they sent me out to uh, work in a refugee camp in the countryside, which was being bombed by the United States. The height of the Salvadoran War, where we helped kill 80,000 people, including the great Archbishop Romero. And uh, the theory was, when the death squads came to the refugee camps, they sent us, the young, white, gringo Jesuits, out to meet the death squads, hoping they might uh, kill us, or, but not them. Or at least they wouldn't kill or kidnap people because we were there. And talk about working through your nonviolence quickly. It was a very powerful experience, to say the least. The most powerful was to be with these great Jesuits. The most famous was Ignacio de Acuri. He was a world-famous theologian, philosopher. He was the president of the Jesuit University in San Salvador. Imagine Lafayette College in the center of El Salvador, a country with five million people, and the whole country's at war. Um, and this guy was the president. When we met him, his first sentence to us was like this. The purpose of the Jesuit University here in El Salvador is to promote the reign of God. Wow. 
Is it like that here at Lafayette College? <laughs> I was always joke. I joke. I was working at Georgetown and Fordham at the time, and I didn't think the reign of God was like you know in their top forty. Um, then he went on and said, "However, we have learned in El Salvador that if you want to be for the reign of God, you have to stand up publicly against the anti-reign." In other words, if you want to be a person for peace and justice, you have to stand up publicly, actively against war and injustice. You can no longer say, I'm just going to be a good person with my life. If you want to be good and be about the good philosophically, you have to stand up actively, publicly against systemic, structured, institutionalized, global evil. This is the answer to your question. You, have, you can't just be nice and good. Times have changed so much. Otherwise, our goodness is silence and complicity with the culture of war. This is pure Gandhi. Non-cooperation with evil is as much a duty as cooperation with good. And so at our little meeting, he said, so we here are against all the junta which runs the country, the dictatorship, we're against all the militaries and the armies and the paramilitaries. We're against the U.S. military aid, the U.S. bombing. We're against the violence of the rebels. We're against violence of starvation and disease. We're against violence on all sides. And everyone hates us. And this is what it means to be a Christian. Are there any questions? <laughs> I was about 23 or 24 at the time meeting this great guy. You all know what happened to Ignacio Acuria, right? 19 years ago yesterday. November 16, 1989, 28 soldiers, 19 of them trained in Georgia at Fort Benning at the evil U.S. School of Americas, where we've trained 60,000 death squads from all over Latin America. These 28 soldiers woke up the six Jesuits at their house, including Aya Correa, the great man, in their pajamas, made them go outside to the front of the house, and then shot and killed them. And then not to gross you out, but when I was there a year later meeting with a the survivor, they, the soldiers then removed their brains and left their brains next to their dead bodies. As the surviving Jesuit John Sabrino told me in his words, imagine the six Jesuit priests and they're sending a message to all of Latin America. What's the message? This is what you get if you think. Don't think about the world. Don't try to get involved. Don't make a difference or something bad is going to happen to you like this. Or like Gandhi and King and Jesus or the four church women and so forth and so on. So that's where I'm coming from tonight, having known these heroic heroes who were assassinated trying to work for peace. 